welcome to the second episode of the Illustrated City series. Last month in Newcastle was great. Thank you so much for the perfect reception of the channel. Here we talk about art, people and cities. I invite you to travel with me to different cities around the world and meet exceptional artists. We get a chance to walk into their workspaces. We get a chance to know their craft. If you haven't seen the first episode, don't forget to check it out after you watch this one. Today we are not traveling far. I will ask you to stay with me in my own backyard. We will meet one of my favorite artists from Sydney. So I work with on one of my artistic projects. If you haven't heard about pieces, please check it out. I really believe it's worth your time, as it was worth a Guinness World Record. Hi, I'm Reg Mombasa and this is Illustrated City, Sydney. Hi, my name is Reg Mombasa. I'm an artist, uh, musician and graphic designer. I came to Sydney um, in 1969 when I was 17 with my parents who decided to come here from Auckland and New Zealand because there was a recession on at the time and Dad couldn't get any work as a carpenter. Shortly after coming here I went to art school, to the National Art School, and that's where I met the members of Mental As Anything, the band that I played with for 20 odd years, and we formed at art school and started touring around Australia and elsewhere in the world. I've shown in galleries in Sydney, mainly Waters Gallery, and then in my current gallery is called Rogue Pop-Up, which is in Redfern. I'm married and have three children. I live in an inner city suburb of Sydney called Glebe, only, only a couple of miles from the um, centre of, of town, which is very handy if you want to go to anything in the city. Some of the regular spots I would visit in Glebe are the Bariloche South American cake and pie shop in, um, in Glebe Point Road. A place where I sometimes get a takeaway cake or a or an empanada. They make very good empanadas. I buy beer at Tim Bar's bottle shop, which uh, he also has a restaurant um, uh, attached to his bottle shop down at the end of Glee Point Road. Nine, 
We also have a very good fish market down at the, uh, at the end of Glebe, which is uh, blocked at Black Waddle Bay, which has got a great range of um, fresh fish and restaurants and cafes and what have you. We're sitting in my studio, which is in the roof uh, of the house that I live in, which is an old um, Victorian terraced house. This, this um, attic room was just full of black soot for the first few years we lived here, and then, um, then I decided to use it as a studio and had a, a carpenter friend put a couple of windows in and, and lined it, and, um, and it's been a great, a great sort of studio, a way of um, escaping from the world to some extent in order to uh, do some artwork. Well, th this is one pile of books. All, all, these, all these things covered in black plastic are sketchbooks. I cover them with black plastic just in case we get a, a, a bad rainstorm and it rains and it ruins my books because I do. A, a lot of the work I show in galleries comes out of these books and, and, and there's a lot of, I mean, there's probably five or six thousand drawings sitting around the studio. Stuff that I, some stuff that I may use and finish off in the future and other stuff that I will never use. All, all of these, these larger coloured pictures lying around the studio, they're, they're, these are all pen and inks, which is um, um, a medium I've been using a lot in the last um, two years or so. I, I'd never really used pen and ink before and I started using it and really enjoyed it. So, so it's, a, it's a, like a way of painting quickly. It's quicker than normally using oil paint or acrylic paint and, um, and I like the, many of the qualities of the ink I particularly um, have, have grown to like a lot. I'm not particularly gregarious. I don't go out a lot. I'm happy to just stay home and work, but I, I mean, there are a few places that I go to relatively regularly. We'll go and have a look at some of them right now. Yeah, this is it. So, um, I've got good sausage rolls and pies if you like stuff like that. Nice cakes. It's a French, French cake shop. Um, I'll get one of these rolls. I'll see if they've got the ones I want today. This is the art shop where I buy most of my art supplies because they have the uh, particular coloured pencil uh, brands that I like to use and a few other things as well, so um, I come here quite frequently. Uh, this place has these specific coloured pencils which I use, which are these Conte à Paris and also these Carbothello, which I, I particularly like. They're sort of chalky, chalky pencils. They're not, they're not lead pencils, so you can, you can do a layer, then cover it, then work into it. And generally, um, it, it's more malleable than the normal one. 
uh, waxy colored pencils. And this is, it's, it's a very good, you know, traditional art shop. They've got all the old style materials and um, varnishes and mediums and what have you. In my first art show I had in 1975 at Waters Gallery, I painted a lot of um, pictures of suburban houses that my father had built for the family in New Zealand. He was a carpenter and a builder. I started painting them and when, when Dad retired, he, he started making uh, dolls houses, um, mainly, you know, English, English styles. But I, I asked him to um, make a, a, mod, a doll's house model of one of the houses that he built. He reluctantly agreed to do that, and that's that house there that was that would have been built in 1957 in um, South Auckland, in New Zealand. I would have been I don't know five or six years old when we started living in that house, and my children played with it when they were children, and it was nice to have a record of that type of, of house. And, and his dad did a good job of of um, making an exact copy of it. Uh, this would have to be one of my favourite spots in Sydney, if not the favourite spot. To my right is the, um, the Sydney Observatory, which I, I, I visited when they have um, it open to the public, when you get to have a look through the telescope at the stars, which was very interesting. To my left is the SH Irvin Gallery. Behind me is the main part of Sydney Harbour, and in front of me is the, the Inner Harbour. And, um, and Darling Harbour. Um, to my left there is the new Barangaroo area. You could also have, the, have these beautiful old Moreton Bay figs, which are particularly uh, attractive trees, which, some of which I have drawn at times. Okay, this is a car bone, which is um, obviously the bones of a car. If you've got a, if you've got a car and put it in a very large vat of um, hydrochloric acid, it would get all the flesh off the car and then you'd be left with the bones. So it's a comment on the, um, the coming death of Western civilization. And you could say it was represented by the car and the death of the petrol car and fossil fuels generally is kind of indicated by the car bone. Very sad and very, also very good and appropriate. We're down at the rocks, which is the, um, it, it was the first, the oldest part of Sydney. It was, it was first set in the late 18th century. So it's got some beautiful old buildings.
This is uh, a, a biography written by uh, Murray Waldron, which was, I think, released around 2007. This is a more recent book, just of landscapes. Um, a jigsaw puzzle um, based on one of my a picture that was outside the opera house. It, they, they join up, there's three, the road all joins and the picture joins up. There's another jigsaw puzzle, Australian Jesus helps Noah with his heart, it's the, uh, based in Sydney. For those that are not um, familiar with Mambo, it was a, an Australian company which was um, founded in 1984 by a guy called Dare Jennings. Dare's um, idea with Mambo was that most of the surf brands at the time were pretty much logo driven. There wasn't much, there weren't any interesting pictures or images. So Dare's idea was to put interesting images on the shirts and, um, and, and he did that very successfully. I started working for uh, Mambo in 1986. Um, Dare Jennings had seen a singles cover that I did for Mental as Anything, um, and I ended up being one of the one of the regular contributing artists to Mambo. Every year I would do quite a few T-shirt and poster designs, uh, yardage designs, logos, what have you. For me, it was great for for an artist that would generally show in galleries and perhaps have an audience of a few dozen or a few hundred for each show. It was, this really it increased the sort of public perception of your art. It meant, meant you could get your get your pictures onto the moving platform, which is a person, which I was very happy to do, and um, and also coming up with ideas for Mambo led me to down paths that I would, ne would not have proceeded down if I'd just been drawing and painting for gallery shows. So it really, um, it's, it broadened my subject matter and my perspective um, considerably. Um, we're inside the S.H. Irvin Gallery, which is a, um, a gallery I've um, been involved in quite a few group shows, and they gave me a, a, a survey show here in uh, 2007, which, um, which was very enjoyable.
we're, we're in the National Trust Cafe, which is attached to the SH Urban Gallery. I often have a uh, coffee and a sandwich here. They make particularly good, um, particularly good chicken, poached chicken, uh, poached in milk sandwiches, which I would thoroughly recommend. Made by Margaret, who is just walking past. This is Margaret, who makes the beautiful poached chicken, milk chicken sandwiches. <laughs> So that's the view from Dawes Point. Slightly modified, extended. That's from pretty much outside the MCA, which is another interesting art gallery on the harbour. Another view of the Opera House. That's the observatory where we were today and some of the trees and the garden there. We're down at the, um, on the harbour, we're sitting at the base of one of the towers that holds the harbour bridge up and I'm looking at a scene that I've drawn or painted or made etchings of several times of the base of the harbour bridge with the opera house just behind it and the harbour there in the background. One of my favourite spots in Sydney. It's a particularly good, good view of the Opera House from here. It looks better from some angles and this is one of the better angles. In 2013 I was asked to be the designer for the um, New Year's Eve celebrations and the fireworks display which is held every New Year's Eve outside the Opera House. We were, we were at the Opera House for the uh, ceremony and the, uh, and the fireworks display and there was a concert. I got to design a whole lot of um, banners which were put around the city and all, these, uh, all the, the graphics that were associated with the display. And so that was, um, that was an interesting job for me. It had to do with my favourite drawing subjects, which are the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge.
apart from Sydney, which is a city I particularly like, and another city I like in Australia is Melbourne. I also like Hobart in Tasmania. In New Zealand, I think probably my favourite city is, I should, it should be Auckland, which is where I come from originally, but it's probably um, Wellington, actually, which is a, show, a, a city that I, sh I show in at uh, Bowen Galleries in Wellington. I've been showing there for 20 years, on and off. Um, cities overseas that I particularly like, I, uh, Parma in Italy, I had a, an art show in Parma about five years ago. In America I, pick, I like New York and uh, San Francisco. In Asia I like Hong Kong, I think it's a, a, a fascinating busy city. And in Europe pretty obvious places like Paris just for its amazing history and beautiful buildings and art galleries and restaurants. And also London, I, I've spent a bit of time in London and that's a that's an interesting place. I particularly enjoyed going to the, um, the National Gallery and the um, British Museum, which um, I spent a bit of time in when we were, when the mentors were um, there promoting a record some years ago. Uh, thanks for spending some time with me. I, I hope you uh, enjoyed seeing some of the the spots that I frequent and particularly like in Sydney. Um, it might encourage you to visit Sydney sometime or if you already live in Australia to um, enjoy some of these locations. Thank you. If you want to see more footage from Sydney, if you want to see some behind the scenes photo, don't forget to follow Illustrated City Instagram and jump on our website. You may ask where do we go next time? If you recognize the location, let me know in the comment below. We had fun and we will have so much more in the coming months because I have really interesting places for you to see with me. Tell your family, tell your friends, let's make this channel big. I hope you enjoyed the episode, thanks for your time, I hope to see you again next month.